So these are the things we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on the fact that everything that we do for our patients is to help our patients and their patient care. We're going to talk about communicating. Um, in order to help our patients, we must communicate well and efficiently and effectively with our um, coworkers and with owners. Um, and we need to talk about teamwork and educating um, and talking <laughs> with our team. So starting with the basics, which Megan Brugier drilled into us, um, triage templates are really important. Uh, having an understanding of the different levels of urgency of emergencies is really important. Um, you know, respiratory patients are obviously most important. Seizing patients are also very important. Trauma. But the hard part when you look at breaking things down, as you can see at um, the table on the left, when you're seeing patients that have severe respiratory disease versus a urinary obstruction, that urinary obstruction could have respiratory, um, have, have a respiratory disorder, and so that then bumps it up. So using our critical thinking skills to break down what is most um, urgent is really important for a uh, triage technician. Um, and then having phone triage questions or regular triage questions in your pocket, having verbiage there already is really important and really helpful for, um, for talking with clients and being prepared. So I like to make it even more basic, and this figure will be in your lecture notes. Um, so starting with introducing yourself, um, answering the phone and introducing yourself. Say, I'm Jessica, I'm a CBT here. Um, have, have we seen your pet before? That gives you a little credibility. It makes them be like, oh, she's going to know what she's talking about. Um, and then you can also look up their account at that time if, if they've been there before. Ask the patient's name, that way you can refer to them because owners like to know that you're talking about, it gives them a little bit more, um, you know, it's a little bit more personable when you talk and ask um, what their Fluffy's name is and, and refer to them as Fluffy. Um, ask their species and their breed because, um, you know, a golden in respiratory distress may not be as worrisome as a pug in respiratory distress. And then age, as you know, young patients tend to um, not do as well recovering from certain things and older patients as well as uh, recovering from certain things as you know, our middle aged, more established patients. Um, sex, are they altered? Because that could be the difference between a pyometra or not. Um, and then their main concern, I always ask, so why are you calling today? Because you know how people will go off on two weeks ago, this happened. And then how long has that been going on? And then from there, you can kind of help lead these owners down a road and ask um, what kind of pertinent medical history there is or their current medications that they're on. Sometimes they don't remember that their patient may be a, um, has heart disease until they say, well, we're on um, enalapril and pemobendin. Then you're like, oh, so he has some history of some heart disease. And then they remember, oh, yes, yes, that's what that is. So I've put this list together, and this will also be in your notes, um, and there's two slides of all of the different questions that you can use to help jog your memory. Because when we're busy in the middle of the day, in between dentals, or in between triages, or in between spays and neuters, it's hard to center yourself and remember and really ground yourself and talk to that client that's on the other end of the phone. So these will help you be like, oh, they said this, maybe I should ask this question. So a lot of these ones that I like in here is, you know, asking about their gum color. Um, it gives you a second to kind of think about what other, what other questions you might need to ask, and then you can explain to the owners how to do that over the phone. Um, these are the hardest, obviously, because it's over the phone, so you can't touch the patient or have an idea of how they're actually acting. Um, and then asking things like, is there anything they could have gotten into? I've noticed that when I start to list certain things, such as does your Labrador like to eat toys, or does your um, cat like to counter surf and ask different medications that maybe they remember, oh yeah, actually I had some Advil on the counter, maybe, maybe that, and I can't find it now. Maybe they ate that. Um, some more questions. For vomiting and diarrhea, they're pretty much kind of the same thing. How long has it been going on? Are they still eating? How, any change in food? And then, you know, they talk about changing food and do you go down that rabbit hole of like, well, did you do that transition gradually or <laughs> not? Um, and then trauma is a really important one. Um, remember to remind them that they have, that there's compensatory shock, that if that patient was hit by a car and they're up and walking, that it, they could not, they could be showing no signs of, of distress or injury at that time, but it's still really important to have them brought in and looked at. 